Well, well, fine. well. Look at us leaving camp at 8, 10 a.m. What's going on here, Dal? <laughs> It's amazing what you can do with a little bit of incentive. Last few days, it has not really let up the weather. It has rained almost consistently. So we've just been bunkered down, getting catching up on some work and getting the kids' schoolwork done. Liz has just started a course as well. She's doing a little interior design course. Today, despite the weather not having improved, we jagged the trip on the Queenstown Steam Railway, on the Rack and Pinion Railway. We're pretty excited to go and get on that. It was, uh, we had a bit of a kerfuffle trying to book it and some dramas with our booking and we missed out basically. So we're on a waiting list and we were about to leave Queenstown yesterday and got the call to say they could squeeze us on today. So we're going to jump on that, which we're bloody excited for. This is one of the things I've been most looking forward to since we got on the ferry over here to Tassie. I'm pretty excited. I think the boys are absolutely going to love this one. So where we've been staying in Queenstown is the Queenstown Football Oval, which is actually gravel. It's run by the Lions Club. It's a donation camp for five bucks a night. It is not what you would call a pretty campsite, but there's a dump point just across the road and a water fill point here. Tell you what, the kids have bloody loved it here. They've been out riding their bikes, racing around, which means they haven't been in the van. They've been playing with all the other kids that are here for five bucks a night as well. Um, during, when it was raining, like rain days in a caravan with kids is tough. Like it is mentally exhausting. They were out under the grandstands, racing their little cars, having a ball. It was, it's just been really, really good. This incredible 34 and a half kilometer section of railway that runs between Queenstown and Strawn was completed in the late 1800s as a way of exporting copper from the mines at Mount Lyle out to the port at Strawn. What makes this railway so unique is the apt rack and pinion system. The locomotives feature a pair of pinion wheels which are driven by a separate set of steam cylinders. When the steep rack section is met, the pinion wheel cogs engage offset teeth on the centre rack and provide a secure and continuous grip to allow the 120 tonne locomotives climb to the top of these hills. It's a stunning way to explore the Tassie wilderness and is something that we'd highly recommend you add to your list when you're in this part of Tasmania. There's a number of stops along the journey and the kids got to have a crack at gold panning before we reached the final stop at the top of the hill and turned around to return back down to Queenstown. This was an incredible feat of engineering to see as the two locomotive drivers were able to spin this huge locomotive around on the turntable and then hook up at the other end of the train carriage to take us back down the hill. The King George River is absolutely incredible. Oh, well, we made it back to Queenstown. Success. That was really yeah, good fun. Yeah, that was so cool. That downhill was pretty, like, interesting, hey? Yeah. I think the whole thing was really, really worthwhile. Like, uh, it's something that, as I said before we went up there, I've been really looking forward to doing, and it, uh, it certainly disapp didn't disappoint. I was a little sceptical, <laughs> um, yeah. because it's not cheap, but it was definitely worth it. And the kids lasted until yeah. about the last 10, 15 minutes. They started to get a little bit bored, I think. But apart from that, they loved the whole thing. So I really recommend it if you've got young kids like ours. The, um, the one we did is called, they call the Rack and Gorge. Uh, we left here about nine and we just got back, it's about two. So that'll give you an idea of how long it takes. Hopefully it's done. Sorry, I just got a kid in the back. I'm just making sure he's not gonna jump Jumping over, over the, the edge. edge. The rain's just started tumbling down again. We are gonna start making our way east from here towards Hobart. I think that that was a really good trip and I really liked like looking for gold. There's the road champ. Oh, look at the waterfall. <laughs> After a massive day exploring Queenstown and then making our way east towards Hobart, we pulled in for a quick overnighter, a nice bit of stir fry and then into bed for an early one before get making our way to Strathgordon the next morning. Uh, so we're making our way into Ted's Beach today. It is a long, steep, windy road. The road's in reasonably good condition, it's just uh, windy and 
tight uh, keep an eye out for logging trucks coming the other way or anything big coming the other way so we're gonna go down camp at Ted's Beach we've heard nothing but good things so I'm really hoping that it lives up to the expectations because I think in my mind I've built this one up um, let you know when we get there but this drive-in is absolutely stunning it's in the world heritage area and um, we're fully loaded so we're full of water full of groceries got enough fuel to get us around so we could be there a while we'll see all right I'm gonna enjoy the drive-in enjoy Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. <laughs> it looks amazing. And bonus, our friends are here. Good morning. So we've just stumbled across potentially what I think could be my favorite campsite of all time. Maybe, I'm not sure, it's a big call. But this place here is a massive freshwater lake. It's got a like pebbly sandy sort of beach for the kids. It's shallow for the first 30 meters out and you can park your caravan up on it. It's an in within the national park, but it's free if you've got a parks pass. Bloody perfect. So we've just spent the last few nights here just kicking back with our mates. We've been having like little sushi parties and nacho parties and the kids have just been playing. They've been making all sorts of like imaginative games that they've been building dams and sandcastles and fishing off the jetty and it's just, Bloody magic and in the background you've just got these just this backdrop of these mountains it just ah oh, it just reminds me of Canada I cannot believe it's in Australia like it just is just incredibly beautiful here and we have absolutely jagged the weather everyone here just seems to just be on our wavelength we just met so many awesome people we've been oh coffee second coffee that turn into beers that turn into shared dinners that it's just been really really awesome really kicked back I would highly recommend you pop this place on your list so um, I guess from here we're gonna make our way to Mount Field. We're gonna do a couple of the rainforest walks there. There's a couple of Kraken waterfalls that I'm keen to get to. I know I really wanna see Russell Falls. And then we're gonna head into Hobart and then jump on a boat to Bruni Island. So that's the plan anyway. But yeah, I just wanted to share with you this little spot. Well, so Harrison's just finished his schoolwork for this morning. There's another interesting conversation with the teacher where she asked at 9am in the morning where Harrison was and he's like, I'm at the pub. We're camping at the National Park Hotel, which is awesome little pub just outside the Mountfield National Park. It's basically just support the pub and um, they'll let you camp for free which is amazing and we're more than happy to support the pub. The lamb shanks are a win, an absolute winner. So this morning we're um, all done, dusted, done our jobs this morning and we're off to Mountfield National Park. There's a couple of Kraken waterfalls here. There's supposedly some really nice easy short ones. Uh, sorry, some really nice easy grade ones that are suitable for wheelchairs and prams, which is awesome if you've got little kids. And um, we've been here before a long time ago and I think the campground here is actually pretty good as well if you're interested in camping in the National Park. It's got hot showers and things like that. Here we are, Mountfield National Park. So if you are coming to Tassie, highly recommend getting the National Park Pass. Works out cheaper than visiting the National Park separately. The National Park fees, they do add up quite quickly and so if you're going to more than who, I would say it's worth getting the annual pass. I 
I think we all need it. We all needed a walk today. <laughs> How's that get fit in Tassie? <laughs> yeah, it's going well, eh? We'll do heaps of big walks and heaps of, like, we'll just be so fit because we'll be working out every morning, drinking a litre of water. Absolutely. <laughs> we'll be drinking a litre of coffee. That's at least a <laughs> ton of water in it. They're big trees. And look, it's been cut off of you. So something's tried to make a home in there. James has just started this new game where he um, stands in front of you and says, what's the password? And then he gives you clues. The clue we just had was, it's got seaweed on it. And I was like, I don't know, like the ocean floor, coral, sushi train. Should have known, I should have known. Really easy walk and a really beautiful walk to Russell Falls there. It's only about 15 minutes on a really easy walking track, so definitely make sure you do that one at the very least. From there you can just return back to the visitor's centre. All what we're doing is a lot of steps. <laughs> Continuing on to Horseshoe Falls, which is only about another 15 minutes, but a lot of steps <laughs> to get there. So I'm gonna punch out these steps, catch my breath, We'll see it horseshoe falls. Well, here we are, horseshoe falls. Another beautiful waterfall, not uh, obviously as large as an impressive as Russell Falls down the bottom there, but yeah, there's just waterfalls everywhere. Even just walking up to here, we walk up to the top of uh, uh, Russell Falls, which is only just back down the path here. Really easy walks, all really nicely uh, looked after. So yeah, very, very easy if, if you can get past those few steps to get up here. From here, you can continue on for another hour to Lady Baron Falls. Uh, we're not gonna do that one today. We're a bit limited by time. Uh, Harrison's got uh, a school appointment at lunchtime today, so we have gotta get back for that. So we just thought we'd do a couple of quick ones this morning. It's been really good just to get out and stretch the legs. Couple of easy walks through the rainforest. Beautiful scenery. So. That'll do us for today. Back in the car now. Trek back to camp. We'll see how we uh, see how we feel. See how the energy levels are this afternoon if we come back up and do a few more. It's literally five minutes drive from the National Park Hotel to come up here. So yeah, definitely worth it. Well, this morning we have set off for one of the other sections of Mountfield National Park. This is the Alpine section. There's actually uh, a ski resort up here, snow resort and, and ski fields. You can obviously snow ski up here uh, in the winter time, I'm assuming, is, is the majority of the ski season, although I'm sure it probably snows here well outside of winter. It's kind of caught us out. We've gone up a thousand meters above sea level. We're just over a thousand meters above sea level. We're just going to go for a little walk called the Pandini Grove Walk, which circles around Lake Dobson up here, which is this beautiful alpine lake up here. Unreal little drive up here as we came up through the rainforest area with all the tree ferns and then broke out into this completely different landscape that just opened up into woodlands and uh, pencil pines and just a completely different uh, yeah, completely different area. It's like we've been transported just into a completely different part of the country. But um, yeah, only a short 20 or 30 minute drive. Uh, it is an unsealed road up here, but uh, two wheel drive accessible. It, it might be a little bit slippery in the wet, but yeah, in dry conditions, it's certainly two wheel drive possible. Just a nice easy one this morning. It's about a 40 minute walk to go around the circuit. So it'll probably take us about an hour. <laughs> How magical would this place be with a kayak or a paddleboard? Because you could drive right up here and you wouldn't have to carry it. I wonder if it freezes over. That would be amazing. And oh it's snow gosh. up here. Imagine with snow up here. Oh, it would just... It's so... Like, I haven't been to a national park that's that diverse before. Can well, you that's think what, one Well, that's what I was just saying, how quickly, it, how quickly it changed from rainforest to alpine. It's pretty... I, mean, I guess Cradle Mountain was kind of like that. It was quite alpine, and then we went into that little, mm. um, that little river valley, and it just 
suddenly became rainforest and waterfalls and then back out we went. But this is different again. This is a lot more woodland, a lot more gum trees and these pencil pines, which just seem random, but yeah, it's just, I don't know. It's eclectic, but it all works, it doesn't works. it? Yeah, <laughs> it works, yeah. But it's very different to the New South Wales or Victorian alpine regions in visually very yeah. different vegetation. Yeah, even these little like, I call them pineapple trees, but they're not. They're, they just look like the top of pineapples. Have a go at this. It's like a, I don't know, it's like a real hard, spiky, almost like a pandanus, but miniature. I don't know what you call it, but it's right next to, yeah, like gum trees and <laughs> all these other whiting, white flowers. And I wonder if that's the Pandini that the walk's named after, because it said you'll walk through pencil ponds and Pandini. But anyway, there's also this one, which this isn't a great example of it, but this gets um, a heap of white flowers on it, and oh. a lot of them are in full flower. More you, can up see, there. you can see more behind me, and it almost looks like they got snow on them. So yeah, we're trying just... to, we're sort of imagining what it'd be like with snow cover. So when you're coming to Tasmania, if there are so many hikes to choose from, keep your eyes peeled for the great 60 short walks because they're just good value. <laughs> A good value exchange for your effort reward ratios, I think. Tourism Tasmania have done a fantastic job identifying these walks. They just are 60 really great short walks. So when I see those signs, the ones we've done so far, they have certainly not disappointed. This Western wilderness section of um, World Heritage Area that Tasmania has is one of the largest in the world. And it's also amazingly, one of the top ranking World Heritage Areas in terms of there are 10 criteria to meet World Heritage listing and you only need to meet one of the criteria in order to get World Heritage. This section of Tasmania, this Western Wilderness pocket of World Heritage Area, meets seven of the 10 criteria, which makes it and another place in China the only places in the world to meet seven of the criteria. So it's the one of the top ranking. It's sharing it with, I think that's with a mountain in China. So it's pretty incredible when you consider what that entails. These are these same, those same palms that we saw when we were on the Cradle Mountain Walk. I think they're the same thing anyway. Maybe these are the Pandini. I think it's more likely, they sort of look like pandanus that you get up in the tropics, but yeah, obviously grow in this alpine environment. It's such a bizarre thing to see. Is a, is a, like a palm sort of plant in this part alpine of the country. country. Yeah, it's yeah. very odd. But I don't know, again, it just fits. It's, it's this eclectic mix of vegetation that just all seems to work together. But I reckon if you planted it all in your garden, it'd look odd. So I don't know. Nature has a funny way of making things work, I suppose. Beautiful and quiet, this walk. It's definitely the less visited part of Mount Field. And like we said, very, very different to the rest of Mount Field. So yeah, I'm really glad we, we came up here this morning. Anyway, let's keep going and see what else we can find. love to be able to get more drone shots to be able to sh really show off these areas that we're visiting but unfortunately almost everywhere in Tasmania is uh is a no drone zone uh any any national parks but also reserves and um and conservation areas and everything like that are all uh no fly zones for drones so really rules out a lot of the uh a lot of the best parts of, unfortunately I um, mean it would have been great to show you a bit more of Ted's Beach and obviously this area here I enjoy flying the drone, just for a different perspective for us as well. It's almost like getting a, a free helicopter scenic flight sometimes. This is a pretty cool walk now, weaving through these palms. I still can't get over the diversity of vegetation here and how different it all is. Quite a spectacular walk. I'm really sorry for all the plant facts, but I just love them. So, some other cool things that I didn't know before we came here, there's a plant called the Fagus. F-A-G-U-S, I think that's how you say it, Vegas, and it is Australia's only deciduous native and it grows only in this region in Tasmania. Fun fact, Australia does have its very own um, native deciduous tree. I think we have to spend more time in Tasmania. 
Oh, the nurse Banksy is now. Oh, look at this. Wow. Well, the Southwest Tassie Wilderness, what an incredible part of the country to oh, explore. Such a good spot. Like, so yeah. good. From Queenstown over the mountain there, Strathgordon, and then dropping down into Mount Field. Cannot recommend that highly enough. That is an absolutely stunning and diverse uh, area to explore. So much to see and do. We've only just scratched the surface. You've got to get yourself there. Uh, make sure you don't miss Southwest Tassie if you're coming down to Tassie, because it is by far... Oh, just some of the best country to yeah. explore. Allocate a fair amount of time for that region. <laughs> uh, that's right. Next week, guys, we're going to be taking you around and exploring Bruny Island. And then we're yes. ripping into the east coast of Tassie. There's some stunning spots over there as well that we cannot wait to get to. Beautiful Thick beaches. turquoise water, yeah. white sand, red rocks. Oh, stick around. We'll show you. It's a photographer's paradise and it's yep. absolutely a fantastic to explore we cannot wait for that as i said don't forget to like and subscribe guys if you want to see all of that what's coming up and more if you want any more details on any of the camps we stay at in our episodes check the description below uh, i always leave the wiki camps links there where i can to those campsites and liz does a great job on our instagram and facebook as well yeah come say hi to me over there go check out the lifestyle pioneers on instagram facebook and um yeah i'm happy to answer any questions you have and We'll chat there. Thanks right. for watching the ads too, guys. 10% of revenue from all this channel goes to charity. We uh, share those details on Instagram and Facebook as well. If you want to see the charities that we're donating to, we try and focus on rural and regional charities and mental health charities. If you've got anyone that you think we should support, leave us a comment below, yes. let us know. And don't forget, next week will be the next instalment of our off-grid series. series next week is going to be the safety and security, uh, everything we know and everything we've learned and the way we handle safety and security when traveling remotely and living off-grid. Looking forward to sharing all that with you. That's a lot to try and wrap up in one little <laughs> video. Hope you enjoy this one, guys, as always, and we'll see you next Sunday. See you Sunday. But what's really special about it is it, do you know anything about it? It's all right, let's do this. Oh, so early. Gold. Fix my hair. Every time. Every single time. Better take you with us. Just the um uh oh, kids are just fighting and stacked and the tree didn't move, darling. It's just like when do you put your camera away? Honestly. Okay. Okay. Alright. Sounds like a long walk though.